Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Hyrule Chronicles. This is episode 119. My name is Articulate T, I am the Game Master for this campaign, and with me as always, I have playing Renji Vox, Nether. Hello, that's me. I have playing Hikansio, Avrance. Hello. I have playing Zaiden Shari, Robopart. Yeah, hi, hi. And I have playing Max, Keystrith. Hello. Oh. oh, Pyro, that was very cute. <laughs> <laughs> what happened last time, folks? Last time, the Storm's Eye headed into the Gerudo Desert, properly setting out from the Gerudo Fortress. Hikan and Max scout ahead, and they notice a strange movement in the sand, uh, sand ahead. Regrouping, the party prepares to fight what appear to be Geldmen. Geldmans? Geldmen? A group of individuals of Gelt, uh, whatever. Malevolent sand elementals bent on drowning Gelt creatures people. in the. Gelt folks. Um, malevolent sand elementals bent on drowning creatures in the sands. Ikan is having some trouble with them, as they seem to be resistant to his strikes. But they soon realize that the Geldman's resistances can be removed by soaking them with water. A few uses of Tidal Wave from Zaiden certainly helps to deal with them. While the Storm's Eye does not defeat all of the ambushers, it is clear to the remaining ones that this was poor decisions on their part, leaving the Storm's Eye to go about their business. They soon reach the Water Temple, I mean the Gerudo Water Facility. It seems completely abandoned, and there is a strange lack of background magic that Renji picks up on. As they explore the area, they find a great hall with a large statue of a woman overlooking a dry waterway. A magical pot that can be used to store food indefinitely, holding poisoned food. And a medallion of Nehru with faded ancient Gerudo writing. And as they continue their explorations, a sense of cold unease washes over them. And so it is that we return to this sense of cold unease standing within the walls of this decrepit temple and facility uh each of you in this admittedly comparatively cramped hallway um as a chill runs down your spines um the uh um as you may look about yourself to see what might be causing this um you your passive insights are enough to tell you that this force is essentially demanding that you leave okay um so as we feel that if i hadn't already aspiration is in my hand and un uh What's the word? Unsheathed? No. Ignited. Active. Lit. Um. Oh, wait. It's lit AF. Yeah. And uh, I uh am now casting a light in thirty feet. Uh, bright light and then additional 30 feet uh, dim light sunlight okay okay um, so you cast this light uh, it spills out into the corridor uh, out into rooms with open doors um, the shadows play in the light a lot a little more animated than initially anticipated um seeing your uh use of weaponry um in uh in defiance to this immediate feeling uh renji as you turn and look towards where uh max and zaiden are you can see mm -hmm. just floating above and behind max is a singular flickering lantern that clatters slightly and as that sound begins max you hear it behind you and you mm. turn side and you see to your side and turn and see this lamp um another one appears behind tyrena and another one appears just in front of hikan um 
as they kind of begin to manifest slightly the sickly green flame uh, within this... Green uh, flame. <laughs> God, that's a reference. Uh, that's a throwback I apologize for. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> within these uh, gnarled, wrought iron lanterns um, connected currently to no body. I think upon seeing them, you said they were uh, their lanterns here, here, and here? Uh, yeah, uh, specifically the last one is in that square, oh. but okay. um, um, otherwise I would on. like uh, one, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, three, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. Eldritch Blasts. Uh, I was going to say hello, but okay. <laughs> That wrench is all violent now. Time that we've in, the first two times that we've interacted with things with pole lanterns, they've been friendly. Uh, mm, uh, oh. <laughs> Get halfway through a hello and suddenly hear three gunshots. <laughs> I mean, Max is in between, Renji. You, you could interrupt. Mm -hmm. Sure, so okay. Hold a hand <laughs> out and go, hello. Okay. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just no, this is good. This I was is... disappointed when I was going to say hello, but all right. It's just... <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> I understand that it's D&D, &D and usually the obstacle is destroy the other object's hit points, but... <laughs> Reduce the enemy's hit points to zero before yours hit zero. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Um, but yeah, so you... Uh, you hold out, like, as you see Renji, uh, like, preparing to cast Eldritch Blast, you hold out a hand and turn towards the apparitions and say hello, and, um, in sequence down the line, uh, they would say, Interloper, Defiler, Trespasser, back to the front, Thieves. Actually, we're here to turn the water on, but sure, whatever. Yeah, we hear about your pipes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, give me a... Max, give me a persuasion. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, with, yeah, with a 13, um... As you as you say that the the lantern in front of you seems to there's a, a a thing that only you can see, but it seems to draw in most of the light until there is naught but like from your perspective naught but darkness. Um, with the only thing within that void being the lantern just off to your periphery, and then slowly emerging from view as if stepping out from shadow, is the face of what appears to be a Gerudo woman, desiccated with a rotting veil that covers their broken teeth, um, with uh, hollow uh, with hollow eyes, with two little pinprick dots of green, and it just kind of gets right up to your face, like half an inch away from your nose. Um, Max doesn't move. Mm -hmm. As expected. Um, <laughs> you think you can intimidate me? <laughs> <laughs> only Max can see this. Okay. Um, Amasha says, I'm not, I'm not lying. This is the moment where it, where it pauses. Staring directly at you, never blinking, never breaking eye contact, matched only well, by your own force of will and, and intimidation. Um, and. I have a guess. <laughs> uh, it says, You have uh, the medallion. Oh shit, that was yours, sorry. No, I'll just hand it back. <laughs> yes, I hand it back. Um, the uh as you present it it doesn't break eye contact as it raises a skeletal hand to take it delicately mm -hmm. and then uh it doesn't leave this visual space um 
the other two lantern wielding entities as uh, as this happens um hikan you also kind of experience this as uh the one that's next to you um in fact what i will do is i will have them apparate themselves here so you know where they are there we go um the uh uh, the one next to you, Hikan, also does the same. The light from aspiration dimming until naught is left but the lantern. Then this face immediately appears right up close to you. Um, and uh, says, Are you here to write what is wrong? Well, what is wrong? Is it the water? Because if it's the water, then yeah. If it's something else, I don't know, because we don't know what else is wrong. Um, yeah, and meanwhile, the rest of you uh, don't see this same apparition. What you do mm -hmm. catch on is you see Mara standing where she is, shrinking back and against the, like, against the wall that she's there, uh, like with her back to it. Um, Tyrina, seeing this, frowns lightly, closes her eyes, and then opens her eyes to, like, this white, uh, glowingness, and then reaches out and grabs thin air, um, like, as if she's grasping onto her shoulder, um, and says, nah, -uh, no, you leave her alone, you speak with me. Um, and, uh, yeah... As uh, as Tyrina does that, the the rest, of, like all three of them, physically apparate in the room um, properly, so everyone can see their bodies and uh, what's holding these lanterns. The for Hikan and Max, the the darkness blinks away, and you're greeted back to the light that is granted by aspiration. Oh, shit, um, that's bright. Yeah, um, <laughs> you have you to blink a couple to me, times. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. But seeing that um, Tyrina and, and I guess, holding this apparition back from Mara, I think Renji would step, like, this way uh, and, and call to all of them. Do not seek to intimidate us. We are here sent by the Gerudo. And we all are them, going like, to be doing our duties here. All of them... <laughs> snapping to your tension at Renji. Um, I don't care if, if they want to start something, then I'm going to fight them, but yeah. they, do, they are not going to intimidate my friends. Especially like Mara, who has not been in the thick of this for, mm -hmm. our, for as long as we have. Um, down the line, they say some, somewhat in sequence, like, for centuries, all we have seen is pillagers and thieves come to desecrate the graves of an atrocity. We must be sure of your conviction. What happened? They all turn to Max um, and say, Invaders, attackers, Hylian, Gerudo, all dressed in darkness. We're, we're not dressed in darkness. We, like, when I look at Max and me, we're dressed in your fashions. <laughs> they all, they all once again turn their attention back to Renji. Um, and say, this is a sacred place. The water grants life and protection. If you are to set what is right back to rights, then we must be sure of you. Conviction. And what do you propose we do? 
to set your minds and your spirits at ease. The um, the ghost that is holding on to the medallion next to Max mm -hmm. slowly and creakily hands it back to him. Mm -hmm. Um, says this is but one key to this puzzle. Monsters dwell within these halls. Remove them and return the water. And your conviction shall be proved. Max just holds the medallion a little tighter and says, Monsters aren't a problem. We've dealt with monsters before. We've dealt with spirits before. This is really nothing new. You're welcome to watch if you want. And then I'm just going to start walking. Yeah. Yeah, I... I, I don't think I, I'll walk immediately. I think first I'll pass by Zaiden and this... Um, apparition just and move the here. Mara, are you okay? You're like holding a book to a chest and breathing deeply. It's, it's not every day you see uh, what remains of Gerudo spirits. I can, but like to squats that way since Mara's kind of leaned against the wall, so it's close to eye contact. And fall out of hand. You'll shakily take it. Um, the the trio of spirits turn and watch this for a moment, eyes locked on Mara briefly before eventually f literally fading out from view, one by one. Um, leaving you guys alone within the corridor. Do we not see their uh, lanterns as well, either? The, the lanterns go with. Okay. Imara, hey, they're gone. <sighs> I'm sorry. I... Nothing. No, no need to apologize. Honestly, that was scary as hell. I don't I don't blame you. Just, just take care of this. Yep. We won't stay here for longer than we have to. But I think we're going to have to uh, explore a little bit more of this place. And Hikan still has his uh, arm offered. Yeah, I'll still hold on to Mara's hand, as long as it's me. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. He nods and gets up, stands straight. Um, she will relinquish Hikan's hand after after a little bit of time, after steadying herself. Um. Tyrina, for her part, will just kind of watch this, and when she see it, when Mara seems secure, she'll nod to herself and then carry on tromping down the hallway in a heavy armor. Um, I'm here with Renji, moving back to uh, to Max. Yeah, Max. Max stays by the door until she's standing, mm -hmm. and just walks in. Just door over there. Yeah. Oh wow, an entire kitchen, and then <laughs> <laughs> oh right, yeah. I can't ever saw that. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you uh move over to the door. It's another set of double doors, uh, wooden mm -hmm. embraced with iron. Um, as you if you push against it, it's not locked. It is easily opened. Um. In the hallway that lies beyond, you see one door to the north, two doors to the south, and one at the very end of the hallway. Mm -hmm. Oh. I don't think I'm supposed to see that just yet. Yeah, there's, a little, uh, there's a little bit of gap on the door. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, 
same same here okay. uh, and give me here. two seconds i'll make sure no worries so uh, but <laughs> on my end i can also see this room and i am immediately worried don't worry about it don't worry about it. okay i'll do my best there we go there is no room in bossing say <laughs> that's fine the um this was this was made before all the different adjustments that they made to tail spies yeah. uh tail spies mm -hmm. roll 20s dynamic lighting levels and stuff mm -hmm. so it's uh yeah it's all good just making sure everybody's sorted and ready to go uh move that down here cross there we go okay i think that has maybe sorted it if there are any other gaps mm. then yeah don't worry about it. It's all yep. fine. Yep, uh, that we does seem to have, down the uh, corridor. Um, solid. it's fine. I would like to. Although open I put this myself door. back down and could, for a second, see everything. Okay. Mm. It, it disappeared soon after, but you're yeah, you're this fine. You've been, to... like you you you're, you're yeah, part of the first I know, group. But <laughs> I know, but like the dynamic lighting seems to be having a moment in this place. Yeah, yeah you managed to see um, between the code. Oh shit. I think Ranger is going to open this door now, if that's okay with you, DM. Okay. Um, the door itself, in this instance, has what? no handle, and when you push against it, it is uh, locked. Um, however, uh, it does have the symbol of Nehru inscribed on it. Hold up the medallion. <gasps> it's a small key! Uh, there's a brief amount of resonance um, before eventually the door uh, sounds like it is unlocking. Ooh. Oh, I see ooze in that room. Hmm. Yay! You see within this room what appears to be a large open space. Uh, at one end of the room, there appears to be a um, uh, what's the word? Uh, a trench of viscous green liquid. Um. Suspended above it by about five feet appears to be a large safe on the wall. It's just this big metal Ooh. hatch um, that appears to have like a series of tumblers and uh, keyholes and everything. It seems very complex. Um, on the western side of the room, there appears to be a winch with what looks to be a very broken chain beneath it. Um, the, the spokes on this uh, winch seem to be still functional, but are clearly there to have been attached to a chain of some kind. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Anything that looks like what the chain is supposed to be attached to? Um, uh, give, me a, on the winch? give me a perception check. 17. Okay. Um, I would like to, uh, to join in on that action. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, that's uh, I, I rolled an 18. <laughs> okay, so with a 31, um, and even a 17, uh, you see that uh, along this wall, um, also, what I'm going to do for the sake of it, I'm going to disable the aura you've got there, Renji. Uh, mostly because... Um, I can't see it on my screen. Oh, I can see <laughs> it on mine. Uh, if I, if, if, yeah. Um, the... Uh, what's the word? Uh, there we go. Thank you. Um, yeah, the... Uh, to be to be upfront, there shouldn't be anything in here that'll be affected by light for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, you can see uh, at some point at some points along the wall, there's little uh, slabs or knots of what appear to be metal, but it's been rusted through, and you can't seem to find any kind of hook that was once there. Um, it looks like the chain was meant mm -hmm. to be tied around it and then pulled to one of these things like an anchor. Um, yeah. I think you should check out the other rooms first. All right. You uh, lead the way. Okay. Is this door open? 
uh yeah it's a it's a double de a double decker a double door um <laughs> a double decker door a double decker door um that also oh, has the symbol engraved on each one as you present the mm. medallion the door unlocks ah, okay give me a sec <laughs> oh hey and here I thought I was actually uh, prepared. <laughs> Imagine being prepared. There we go. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> hmm. What was that strange thing I just saw? Nothing. Can't, can't imagine what it could possibly mm. be. What, one of the statues just goes, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Must have been the wind. Um, but yeah. Uh, this room is a large hexagonal room with a thin layer of water, like, uh, underfoot um at each corner of the room appears to be a large multi-armed uh statue standing roughly 18 feet tall maybe taller uh, that is indented into the wall uh there appears to be on the west and east side of the wall of the rooms there uh seems to be uh small furnaces that are raised above the water level and there is a large there is a tall crate at this end of the room, roughly ten feet tall. Um, yeah. Great. Do you want to keep checking rooms or look in this one? I feel like checking all the rooms first before we try to solve any of these mysteries. Okay. Just in yeah. case we see anything obvious to use in another. Does this one also open the same way? Yep. This room appears to be a uh, similar size to the first room you inspected, um, though there is a very deep, a very deep amount of water in here that is admittedly quite clear. On the opposite side of the room uh, to where you are, there appear to be two smaller safes um, that do not seem to be reachable except by either swimming or traversing over this water in some fashion. Peering into it, it's clear enough to see that it is at the very least 15 feet deep. Is there anything visible inside the water? It seems completely clear. Do the safes look like we could carry them? And by we, I mean anyone but Tyrena. Uh, they are built into the wall, so you would have to wrench them from the stonework in order to get okay. them. Hmm. I can go take a close look. Well, that's these, right? Yeah, they're not terribly okay. visible on Roll20, uh, but mm -hmm. they are just there in each corner. I could also take a closer look if we wanted to right now. Um, yeah, feel free. Got the one on the left. Okay. Flies over. You can't just casually walks on the water. Okay. Uh... <laughs> As so, Tyrena mm -hmm. kind of enters the room after Yamara stays just outside. As you do enter the room and traverse over the water, it appears to ripple in a fashion that is not natural for water to do, um, almost like some kind of jelly. Uh, the I just point to and says to stop that. <laughs> as you touch base on the stone at the other side. Um, the water in the middle of the room begins to shift and bend and uh four tendrils emerge slowly before gaining far more defined features um of snarling serpentine entities um and i would like everybody to roll for initiative uh, well, the first did say they were monsters. I feel a boss, boss rush coming up. Uh, I rolled a two. I did not roll a two. I can see. Um, mm -hmm. It'd be very funny if you did and still got a 25. <laughs> Rolling Pathfinder numbers. Okay. Descending. Then. 
battle music. Okay, so. First up on the initiative list is Renji, heir of Nihilus, with Zaiden to follow. What, what are you doing, friendo? Um, <clears throat> with these starting to appear, uh, I think uh, Renji is just going to uh, uh, slash twice at this one. So... Okay. That is... Uh, Damage. Yes, uh, 32. You hit? You hit? Uh, oh, wait, how does that, <laughs> how's that only damage? You don't have oh, your to hit. Right. Yeah. I don't have my to hit. That's odd. 18? An 18 does hit, so you're saying 32 damage? Yes. Um, or actually, actually, hold on. I don't have sneak attack here, I think. Uh... As a as a swashbuckling rogue, um, what's it? I, think it's uh, I don't need advantage on attack roll. If I am within five feet of it, no other creatures are fi within five feet of me. You have to arena directly behind you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't have a disadvantage on the attack roll, so uh, it it's only uh, only eleven. Okay, so only eleven damage. That's okay. You yeah. slash through um, the water sizzles as it makes contact with the blade. Um, let's see. I don't think I can reposition myself. Or I can. But that'll require a spell. No, I can't. Not, not here, not now. Uh, just a regular attack. Okay. 21, uh, 22 for 16. Okay. Once more, the the blade of light cuts through this watery entity, um, steam rising rapidly from it um, as it burbles and snarls at you. Um, but yeah, that's uh, nice. Um, anything else you want to do on your turn? Um... Disengage. Okay. That's fine. Uh, cool. Zayn. Mm, trying. I've been trying to decide because uh, most of my spells are gonna have to hit one of my allies to do AOE. That's fine. Okay. It can't have. It can't have uh, evasion. Use yeah, something that's a deck save. I also have proficiency in all saving throws, so if you're going to hit somebody, hit me. If it's a con I... save, I can take it. I have no. Uh, it is a deck save. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> yeah. off level. An ice storm hitting all four of them. Okay. DC 18 deck save? DC 18 deck save. Okay. okay. Thank you, that means you take nothing? Correct. On the passes. Um, the the remainder takes all the damage. Yeah, so that'd be 21. 21. Depending on if holds have any effect on these watery beasts. Uh, no. Ah. Well, it, it does. <laughs> I mean, in a sense of like, it doesn't have any special resistances. Like that was that was the query that was in my head. <laughs> it's like looking. It's like, no, it's just it's water. Um, but that uh, as you summon the this torrential cold, it blasts forward and uh, slams into all these entities, uh, partially freezing some of them as they are separated from more of their constituent parts. Um, but yeah. uh, that would be, and there will also bonus action shillelagh. Cool. Uh, then it is their turn, um, unless you want to move anywhere. Hmm. Like this place is kind of best since they can't flank us like this. Mm. That is fair. Okay. So, on that, in that case, each of these creatures are going to 
uh, extend the watery tendrils that they are and try and snag you. Um, so uh, the, the one closest to Zayden is going to try and strike at Zayden with a natural 20 or a natural 20 for 20 uh, misses. <laughs> 22 <laughs> bludgeoning damage um, and you are grappled. Oh no. Um, There's 21. Yeah, so you are... You rule that natural 20s always hit? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Okay, that's that's rules important written. to know. <laughs> that's rules was written. Yeah. Um, so you are you are grappled by this creature and pulled closer to the water. Um, you are restrained. Um and it cannot constrict anyone else, so it's currently holding you. So while it holds you, it can't attack anyone else. Uh, you can use your action on your turn in order to try and escape with the DC 13 acrobatics or athletics. Um, but yeah, that would that would use your action. Um, in the meantime, the other one that's next to it is going to try and do the same to Tyrena. For another natural 20 for <laughs> fucking 20 points of damage. They woke um, up on the right side of bed this morning. They really did. Sure did. Um, Tyrena is dragged despite uh, despite the weight of the armor um, and is grappled by this thing, uh, but the armor takes most of the brunt of the damage from the effect. Uh, the one nearest to Khan will try and strike it to Khan, Good and luck. that one does not hit. Um, and the one nearest Max will try and strike at Max for an yeah, eighteen. Okay. Uh, so I have you... very low AC. <laughs> Yeah, so you take 18 bludgeoning damage. Uh, you yeah. are restrained and dragged closer to uh, the tendril, and that would be their turn. That's the most successful bad guy turn I've had for the longest time. <laughs> I'm scared. Uh, Hikan. Let's uh, hope it'll stay there. They get one. Everyone. They get one. <laughs> I haven't had my turn yet. Mm. And these guys are all really close together. Yeah. Thirty-five. I can't cross that. So be forty. Okay. How gross do I want to get? I don't want to spend that many key points on many these monsters. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll just run up and try to stun I mean, all of them. I mean, we can always take a short rest afterwards. Mm -hmm. You can scare them all back. You're right. Okay. So the first one, I'm going to run over here next to my good buddy, Max. Hello. I'm going to try to hit this uh, hit, hit this water weird with an unarmed drake. Or this weird water, rather. Yeah. Uh, 26 for yeah. 7. That hits. Okay, could I get a constitution saving throw, please? Cool. Restrict the key. Assuming it can be stunned. Puddle of water. Uh, let me have a look and see if it has... There's energy in it, right? It is not immune to the stunned condition, so... Lol. Um, okay. Uh, so Eat shit, water. It's immune to being unconscious, but it's not immune to being stunned. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, an elemental, I guess? I think most of them are immune to that. They don't have... Okay. Uh, so that one's stunned. And I'm gonna go over here next to my good buddy Zayden. Uh, second verse, same as the first. Oh. Okay. So that's two key points used. Another constitution saving throw. Cool. 20. Ah, damn, that one passes. Mm. I am going to flurry of blows. Okay. Um, I'll try it again, why not? Uh, 25 for 11 on this one. And that another hits. constitution saving throw. Fails. All right, and then I'll go over here next to the uh, next to my good friend uh, Tyrena, and then I'll punch the one that's got Tyrena. Uh, I'm gonna guess a 13 doesn't hit though. It does, and with the 13 damage that you deal, uh, yeah, and they are magical, so it just explodes mm -hmm. in into water and rejoins with the rest of the larger puddle. Um, so I will take it off the board because it's a cramped room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 20, 40, 50, 
And then I'll just uh, shuffle here so Renji can get in on it. Thank you. And I'll be turning. <laughs> cool. Um, on Tyrena's go, she's going to uh, cough and splutter as she's released from the uh, from the grasp of the water weird and just roll her shoulder, pick up the great axe and aiming for accuracy rather than power just to start with, we'll swing it at the water weird grappling Zaiden. Uh, 24 9, and she's going to use a first level smite on that. Oh, it's undead. Oh, wait. Right. Yeah, sorry, it's not undead. Uh, 20, oh, 20 for 6. Sorry. Undead and she's elementals use... would be funny. <laughs> that would be. Um, aren't that's an additional 9. Undead so that elementals, aren't those 15. just entropic? Necrotic elementals. Yeah. Um,. But yeah, so she does explode some of the water, but it doesn't take out the uh, the water weird in its own way. Uh, Mara is going to uh, activate her mace, but seeing it's quite crowded on that small platform is not going to get in anybody's way and stay out there for now. Um, Max. This one's done, so it can't hit me. Lol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fly over here. And... Does stun, does stun stop grapple, though? Thanks. No, it would be hard for you to be it, grappled by something. If it is stuck, if I am still grappled, then I will stay here. That's fine. I will just go to it on this side. Okay. Uh, stun creature incapacitated can automatically fail strength and dexterity saving throws attack rolls against the heavy advantage. I would say that the automatically fails strength and dexterity would mean you automatically can get free because grapple's normally a contested. Strength type thing, but it would. Yeah, but that would, I would still have to, to so. take an action to do that. And you know what? I can cast things as a bonus action. I I'll leave. Okay. <laughs> I you... will automatically succeed my leave check and go over here and <laughs> spend my sorcery points. Yeah. Um, Fuck yeah. it. I will quicken lightning bolt instead. Okay. And get all of them. them. Yeah. All yes. of them. Give me all of the monsters. Yeah, I'll just do a third level one. Uh, two, two of them are stunned, so they automatically fail. Yeah. And the other one needs a DC 20 dice save, please. Okay. Okay, so that'd be just the one. This is what I've been hoping for since level five. <laughs> and that oh, will no. be 33 lightning damage for all of them. Yep, so the one that's grappling Zaiden, being so close to Death's door, will explode in a shower of sparks and water, freeing the freeing the druid. Um, and the other two will uh, shrink down in significant size from being struck with lightning, uh, but will still remain standing. Um, and that is my turn. Okay. Renji. Um... I think it, it is best right now not to expend too much in the way of spell slots. Um, gun. Yes, I, I cast gun on this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. She'll think you'll be that 17 much. Is, 17 is the lowest. 17 is yeah. lowest, so they all hit. Um, okay. First one. One. So that Second one. one. The Nine. first one. Ex the first one explodes. <laughs> and then the second, then the second one explodes Yay. after you shift target. So you have a third one that I guess doesn't really go anywhere, but it's fine. It'll just hit this wall. <laughs> yep. For eight damage. Okay. Chip the stonework. Yeah. Is that everything on your turn? Um, I think checking, I, I, I do want to move up here and see if there's like any other danger around. Give me a perception check. Sure thing. That's only 16. You don't believe you see any further danger. There's no immediate um, thing in the water that seems out of the ordinary. Um, yeah, it seems to be. Uh, perfectly fine. Is that your turn? I believe that is my turn. Zaiden. Um. 
Uh, I, the player, knows an interesting thing about water weeds. I don't know if Zaiden, the character, would. Yeah. What would I roll to know about water weeds? Uh, give uh, me. All knowledge cultists wait. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that system yet, uh, but I would say give me an Arcana or Nature check. Over five, uh, Nature's more on point for Druid. Natural 20. Ooh, okay. okay. If another water weird appears, I am holding my reaction to cast Destroy Water on the water it is bound to. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> Which is, for water weirds, an instant kill. Yay! So when you say destroy water on the water it is bound to. So water weirds have a, uh, a thing where they are apparently bound to a specific water and they die if that is destroyed. Okay. Um, I presume it's just the water that they are sitting in. Or the water that makes up the, the body that we see when it appears. Uh, yeah, that, that's probably it. So its body can be destroyed Okay. By destroy water. Fair Is it enough. less than ten gallons? I don't know. It's a room of that size, and the pool is fifteen feet deep. I yes. don't think so. There's more than that in the room, but each weird might only be controlling a certain amount. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm destroying each the... weird only uh, is bound to nine point nine nine gallons of water. Oh my god! How <laughs> convenient. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, very helpful. Okay. Uh, well, Otherwise, if you're hot... Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're holding probably it. shout out to Max to check the safe if it's nothing else of his. Okay. Just thumbs up. Yeah. You can. Mooted. We all turned. Mooted. Sorry. That's right. Um, I know people are having conversation behind me. Um, uh, so I'll, uh, do -si -do with my buddy Max and go over to the, uh, safe that they started at. Okay. We just swapped. Um, you, <laughs> you see on the wall a, uh, safe, like a square of metal that's roughly, um, three feet along, two feet up, uh, and, uh, on it appears to be a series of, uh, keys and uh things uh like not keys but keyholes and stuff um it doesn't look like it'll as if you test it it doesn't open immediately um but the uh yeah um you can attempt to open it by either utilizing thieves tools with a thieves tools based check um or if you have an alternative by which you may try and open the safe you may do so Yes, I do have an alternative. I have chunks of Dodongo in a tinderbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good. Um, hey, guys, yes. wait, hold on. May may maybe I can actually, like, unlock the safe first? <laughs> See, you're kind of about to light the dynamite. <laughs> the Dodongo bite. Yeah. I, I, like, if... <laughs> it's chunks of Dodongo. It's not like full <laughs> explosive. Um, but yes, I will wait for my friends with the locking my unlocking skills. Okay. Uh, best case. Um, then I will, I will say what I've found and let them know. Okay. All right. Uh, Tarina and her go can't really Hold do much. Well, Another yeah, she'll weird? she'll hold her action to smack a water weird if one does reappear. Um, and Mara will uh, move over to the door, like just kind of hide around behind the corner mm -hmm. and kind of wait to see if she's called into the room, if anything. But uh, will remain where she is. Max, um, try open the safe. Okay. Fourteen's probably not enough, but. You make a little bit of progress, but you feel like you might need a bit more time. The room's too damp. Yep. Um, Renji. I think I'm going to use a second level spell slot mm -hmm. and appear here. Okay. If that is actually... 
Yeah, that's exactly 30 feet, so that, that works. Uh, and I'm going to use, uh, with Thieves still, a sleight of hand check, right? Or is this... Either one works. I mean, you're probably proficient in thieves' tools anyway. Uh, usually, yeah. lockpicks are sleight of so hand. So I have and... the gloves of thievery. Yeah. And dexterity checks are made to pick locks. So it is a plus seventeen that I'm uh, <laughs> working with here. Okay. That's only a twenty-one. <laughs> only a twenty-one. Um. I rolled a four. <laughs> you um. You begin picking the lock and moving tumblers. It, like, you recognize some of the similar si uh, systems as you go through the process of doing it. As you uh, uh, begin to move things, <laughs> it swings open. Um, high or low? Mm. Even. <laughs> That's not what I asked. <laughs> <laughs> um... Hi. Okay. Nice. Um, as you open it up, inside you see two items. One appears to be a um, leather-bound, gold-braced, and in and filigreed book uh, with a kind of like the uh, platonic symbol of a heart on the cover. Um, I'll let Max see this. And the other is a, it's a book. is a flask oh, yeah. of oil that appears to have flecks of silver within it. Um, Ooh. Are we going to play Mistborn next? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, that is what you find in the safe. Um, okay. um, I think for safety, I will just immediately put them in my pack. Okay. Uh, I will shout out, there's a flask here and a book. We'll check that out later. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not hiding this from Max. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Because I'm I'm trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be rude. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um. All right. Uh, if is that everything you want to do on your turn? Uh, that's action and bonus action. So, I I don't feel comfortable jumping into the water just yet. Okay. With how uh, how tense the situation still is, and us still being in initiative. That's perfectly fair. Even um, though Renji wouldn't know. A character sort of sat and you're like, why can't we still hear the fight music? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is weird. Zayden. Mm. Zayden will just do the same as before. Hold on, ready to vaporize any weird set up here okay and as you do um the uh one weird like the water begins to uh move and begin to summon itself um it uh, another weird begins to appear and snarl at you with a reaction you basically just i'm guessing you just point at the water that is connected to directly beneath it it's either the water that's beneath it, or it's the water that makes up its own body. I'm not sure, but in... Uh, what? The see. wording on the monster is a bit confusing. Yeah, it is water-bound, isn't it? Uh, it dies yeah. if it leaves the water of which is bound, or if the water is destroyed. Um, We're going to have to do maths. Essentially, it's like a cube of this, I imagine, like, a sizable amount of water that is connected to, um, like, just immediately evaporates uh, as you as you hit it. Um, and dis disconnected as it is, uh, it just collapses into itself and uh, is no more. Um, and I'll put it back onto the GM layer. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, having been vanquished in turns previous, um, another set begin to emerge. Only this time there's only three, because you've already taken care of one. Um, Tyrena will uh, swing her great axe this time, looking for damage, but an 11 will not hit. Um, it slinks out of the way of her strike. Um, yeah. Uh, so that was their turn emerging from the water. Hikan. 
God uh, damn it. And I'm just going to punch the ever living snot out of this snot thing. Uh, 27 for 11. That hits. 27 for 14. That hits. I flurry of blows because I can. Uh, 19 for 8. That hits. Uh, I'm just going to see if this does. I'll just. Is it immune to necrotic damage? No. All right, 10 more necrotic damage is still up. Okay. Is that one still up? Yes. And 14 for 10. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, that is turn. I'm going to stay here. That way, maybe attacks me instead of the person who's, uh, unlocking things. Yeah. Um, are, are you able to speak out of turn order? Um, not normally, but I would say, screw it, let's just allow you to do so, but it'll only as be... Long, as long as it's not much. Yeah. Okay, I think we, we all Leiden would say is, I've got these three. We have a talk reaction of th uh, six seconds. Mm. Yeah. So, it's Leiden would say, I've got these three. Okay. So I really have something else I can do to instant kill them. Fair enough. Mm. Um, if that's the case, uh, on Tarina's go, um, she says, uh, sure, one for the road, though. <laughs> it smacks this oh, one yeah. with her axe, finally cleaving away a chunk of water. Um, and we'll uh, say, I'll stay here until we're all out. Um, Mara will remain where she is at the moment. Uh, Max. More unlocking attempts. Natural 20 for 28. Okay. You <laughs> managed to open this safe. Um, inside, there appears to be sheafs and sheafs of documents that are far decayed. Um, a, from what you can Mending. see, there doesn't appear to be anything else of value within the safe. Sorry, did you say was in there? Uh... Like piles of decayed paper documents okay. and old script. I'll just grab them. Yep. Anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Uh, was that my action to unlock the safe? Uh, yes, I would say so. Okay, that was fine. Three sorcery points. Okay. <laughs> and I'll do another lightning bolt. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. I'm going to move up and do a Strock and Grass because I want to save my spell slots a little bit. Mm hmm. 16 for 19. Uh, that hits, and you rob this creature of its reaction in addition to a lot of its hit points as you s okay. grasp onto it with your... you slash at it with your lightning uh, strike, um, and uh, parts of it fall away with the force of the blow. Um, okay. yeah. And I can back up a little bit as well. Uh, Renji. I... Uh, think I am going to step over here, mm -hmm. and I will Eldritch Blast first, this one. Okay. Uh, 15 for 5. Okay. Then 15 for 1. Okay, same one? Yeah. Keep, I thought uh, you got 15 for 5 again, then realized I read the Hexblade's Ghost Damage. Yeah. <laughs> and 12 for 5. The 12 does not hit. Good to know. Okay. And I'll, I'll keep here. This one next to us is tanky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to say, you went for this one menacing max, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I went for this one. Yep. Okay. Zayden. Yeah. My grand idea is Zayden will slap his hands down onto the stone at his feet, and great sheets of stone will arrive, covering basically this entire area, cutting them off from the water. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um... Yeah, I'd say that that create it. flaw. Create flaw. Um, you, <laughs> floor of stone. 
slap a hand onto the stone floor, um, extending out the stone panels, uh, cutting off each of these uh, water weirds and effectively just immediately ending the threat as they are no longer able to manifest above the water, like within the water that is now sealed away. Um, while the water is still visible on the map, it is basically just a big stone room um, okay. at this point. <laughs> the little, cool. Well, there's like little holes because I can't quite fill every space, but... Yeah, mm. it's at least taking care of them for this, for this moment. Uh, enough to say okay. that if you want to depart from the room, you can uh, without needing yeah, to worry should get about out combat. Well, I'll just step out and shut that door. Yeah. Cat in the corridor. Yep. Uh, I and will... will... Cast oh. mending on these papers. While you're doing that, I think Renji is going to show uh, the book and the flask to the others. Um, What's the book? I will ch try and see what the book is. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, opening the book, you find that uh, it's a uh, it's written in a very kind of um, uh, detailed hand, basically calligraphy. Um, but the uh, it's an exhaustive amount of detail with diagrams and everything um, that suggest uh, health and diet tips. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Um, uh, that's the con I think, one. Yeah, I, I, I was. Oh. So. Uh, I, I would very much like the con one. <laughs> I think the spellcasters would do more for it than I would, even though mm -hmm. more HP is always good. But I, I don't have concentration. So. I think. I before... do also need more HP considering my lower AC. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think before uh, a long rest, I will, if I have uh, a spell slot left, I will identify this specific thing. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, and the flask you said had some like oil suspended uh, with silver. Uh, silver. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's a, yeah, and it's not like a, a dark tar-like oil, it's a kind of a clear oil, like, um, mm. yeah, and it has, Clearer like, this oil? tiny, ultra-thin mm. silver shards within. Mm. Alrighty. Like shards yeah. or flicks? Oh. I would like to posit you a question. Uh-huh. As the sole martial class... Would I have heard of magic books that can make you physically better? I will roll an Arcana or a history check because they are minus twos to make it fair. <laughs> I would like sure. to help with the Arcana checks at plus twelve. Go, go for no. it. Give me, give I mean, me a roll. All right. I would also try to roll. Yeah, you 29. have. You have heard. No, of... you both got this. You've heard of of powerful splendiferous manuals that would be able to improve a per that after reading like dedicated study, um, you would be able you would be far better. It was almost as if you had actively spent the the months or even years following the tips inside, um, but doing so would be cut down to a much shorter amount of time. Um, Excellent. So yeah, you have heard of those books. Excellent. Uh, that way we save a spell slot, because uh, I'm much more interested in what potion do. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I think this okay. is pretty interesting. Should we do a short rest here so that um, people can get key points and uh, wild checks back? Oh, if we want to do a short rest, then I am... Definitely going to use uh, identify once on uh, the flask. Okay. Um, you use okay. identify, um, mm -hmm. and you find that it is a magical oil called <gasps> a sh oil of sharpness. Up to 
five pieces of slashing or piercing ammunition. Um, it takes a minute to apply to each, and for one hour it has a plus three to attack and damage rolls. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, before we get too much into rolling hit dice, uh, there is a kitchen here, so I was planning on using the point of chef. Okay. If you want I'm to mostly stay rolling. Place. I'm mostly rolling hit dice just so that I can get my sorcery points back mm -hmm. with uh, my magic item. I don't believe I'm just going to click that. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of a short rest. Gains an extra 1d8. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to spend one That will get me to fall then. Uh, and I, I don't need the extra uh, d8 because I'm already at full. Yeah. You could also song of rest. Um... That is true. I uh, for for those that need it, uh, another d8, I believe. Hold on, d8 or d6? Now. Six, anyway. d6, just a d6. I realized I left the pee on, so... You you did leave the pee on. How <laughs> do I turn it off? Yeah, it's a toggle. Yeah, that's close to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, uh, you briefly head over to the, um, to the kitchen that the, the building has. You have to spend a bit of time trying to get things clean, because it's, it's an older facility. Um, but the... I'll have from... press digitation. I was gonna say, do I? Two of my friends know press digitation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do. Yeah, that's true. So, as a team I'll effort, just cast it takes it in between in between mending all the papers. Yeah, um, it takes a bit of time, but you do eventually manage to get there. Um, and as you're kind of sitting down and eating, uh, Max, you finish mending all the papers, or at least most of them. From the looks of it. And it will take a bit of time to read because it's still in this much, much older Gerudo script. That yeah, you I need to read it to read it for me. Yeah. Um, essentially, it's a series of instructions on how to uh, adjust and like open the valve, the main valve to oh, the um, we need that. to the font. Um, from the looks of it, it, you need two adamantine rods, roughly 10 feet in length, uh, that interlock within the actual machine itself. Um, it then is turned as if like a, a capstan for an anchor and mm. then you and then that should open it or alternatively if pushed the other way close it okay, so find special rods yeah mm -hmm. power of sticks power of sticks cool any indication of where those are normally stored um, the after a while of searching through, it appears that the the instructions say that uh, the if they're not in the large forge room, then they are likely to be kept in the larger safe to the south. So in one of the rooms you haven't looked at yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, given that the ghosts are probably still watching us after using, I go, thank you for letting me use your kitchen, and then <laughs> I'm ready to go on. Right. Yeah. Which one next? Uh, should we try the far door before we deal with the strange, deadly statue room? Does this door even open? I don't know what you're talking about. Those statues look perfectly normal. Uh, I mean... What? You never trust giant statues. They're always evil. Much like the um, uh, much like the doors before, this one has a symbol of Nehru inscribed upon it, and as you present the emblem, it unlocks. We open it. Outside oh. is what appears to be what used to be a garden, probably with a singular, very dead tree. There is an opening in the ceiling that is purpose-made in order to uh, permit light from the outside to come in, um, but is, is, is there water on the floor? No, it's completely okay. dry. Sand. Is there a shadow of one of us standing on the opposite side? No. 
Phew. I was worried about that. Yeah. No, sincerely, sincerely, I, I was worried about it when I saw the shadow of this room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That um, tree is dead, but it's large, so if we ever want to, we can transfer via plants to it now. Oh, okay. Excellent. Nothing in the spell description says it has to be living. Yeah, you yeah. have a fast travel point to this font now. Yeah. <laughs> if for some reason well, we ever want to get to Gerudo Village fast, uh, this is the closest place with a tree to it, probably. It would mm. it would have to take a long rest, but yeah. Yeah. Good to know. I mean, like if we were elsewhere. But uh, uh, can can we see anything in this room out of the ordinary? Give me a perception. Gotcha. Only a thirty-two. Mm. Um, looking around, you don't seem to see anything out of the ordinary, except perhaps just the rather unfortunate circumstance of um, this place being effectively lost to time. Um, there are like inscriptions and murals on the wall to suggest that there once was something there to... Um, like describe like beautiful artwork and everything but that's mm. been long since been worn down by uh time and the sands and everything that seems to have found their way in um otherwise it's just kind of this it's a it, you believe this would have been a pleasant spot were it not for the fact that it was just left and abandoned Good place for a long rest if we need one, mm -hmm. it seems. Mm -hmm. Um, should we check out the other rooms? All right. I guess we got this room to look at. So the floor, is it wet or is it just stone that's colored that way? It's wet. There's, uh, it, uh, the actual room seems to dip down slightly to about a half inch deep water. Well, <clears throat> anyone want to take a look around? Roll, something, so about, check, check. something about the rods either being in here or the big save. Good. I'll do another perception check. Okay. Give me a perception. perception. 27. 19. 19. 19. Uh, 19. You believe, yeah. You believe that the rod is probably going to be stored anywhere. It's probably in this box at the top. Uh, it is roughly the same height. Uh, it's the forges themselves, long burnt out, have uh, are not the appropriate size for something of of that variety. Mm -hmm. um, and as everyone steps into this room, mm -hmm. um, the door shuts. It does indeed, and locks. And <laughs> these uh, cr these uh, statues uh, animate only the one. Only the only the oh okay. Um, so to go to give the appropriate description, I probably could have given if I wasn't so foolish and didn't actually hide things. Um, no worries. The uh, as you enter the room, uh, one of the statues on the walls, which have been so to re-describe them, they are six armed statues of roughly 15 feet in height and they are see like they're not actively standing in front of the wall they're indented into it um as if carved into the stone itself um they're uh embossed with this metallic filigree and everything um each arm at the end of each arm is a gratuitously large sword curved uh like a saber um and as the door locks behind you, uh, the uh, there is a rumble of stone as this thing seems to animate and pull itself free from the wall. 
Um, and once more, I would like everybody to roll for me with feeling. initiative. I'll bring up the initiative tracker. That's a 13 for me, 19 for Max, 21 for Zaiden, and 10 for Hakan. Okay. Oh, that's what the count does. Okay. That won't do. That one on its initiative. And yeah, makes sense for giant stone monster. It's very slow. Yeah, Tarina does well. Mara gets a nine. Um, Okay, so first up is Zaiden. Um, but beyond fighting these things, do we have any idea what to do about this room? Um, There's a thing in the box that we need. Yeah. It's okay, we can we can handle that. I'll just go to the center of the room. Um, actually, better than that would be extending my role as a field. Go. Hello, stone statue thing. You know what else is stone? You. Me. <laughs> <laughs> fairly sure this will be. Hmm. I guess I they probably don't either count. turned into a earth elemental or a weed elemental. And be right, stoned either way. Fight right, rocks with rocks. Yeah. I guess they probably don't count as objects or structures. It's uh it considers itself a construct, I would think. I was just looking at the earth elemental siege monster thing. Ah. Uh, I think that's just beating up walls. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's for tearing down buildings. Uh, but well, I will go to the basic option of Lamb. Okay, 18, welcome 16. to the jam. And 18 hits. I will do 16, followed by another slam for 13 for 11. That misses. Okay, and then I will uh, be here defensively. Okay, so you, uh, as you move, you transmogrify into this uh, mighty earth elemental, swing forward, you slam into it, there's a mount, uh, there's a solid bang as you dent part of the metal, as you bring up another fist not to try and uh, hit it again, um, the actual, it glances off another part of its armor and is left unaffected. Max! Hmm. I do like my storm spheres. <laughs> do like them a lot. Uh, let's go for a fifth level one. Be fancy with it. I need it to make a strength save, please, while I draw a rectangle. I'm gonna make it like. High enough that um, it's above uh, Zidane's head. Yeah. These Where's things are probably it? taller. Takes 10 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And for my bonus action. Pew, 26 or 25 learning damage. Okay. Nice. That hits. I'm going to move here to the box. So I can focus my bonus actions on lightning. Nice. Tyrena will utilize all of her movement to get here. <laughs> and will dash to be in melee. Um, but then uh, that's as far as she can go. Um, Renji. All right. Moving over here. I am first. With a bonus action, going to use Hexblade's Curse on this thing. Mm -hmm. 
And then I am going to use two attacks, a 27 mm -hmm. and a 27. Okay, so both of those hit. First attack will have sneak attack damage. Okay. That is, let's see, 30 plus 5 is 35. Okay. Second is Radiant plus Hexblade is uh, 17. Oh, I should have gone for this sneak attack damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Um, That's all good. Yeah, you cut into this creature um, after it's been blasted with lightning, uh, cutting away parts of its armor and some of the stonework as it continues to free itself from the wall. Um, uh, yeah. Anything else in your turn? Um, that's my bonus action and my action, and... Um, oh, yes, I would actually like to add... Um, a defensive flourish on this. Uh -huh. um, so that's one use of Bardic Inspiration and a D8. Seven points okay. of, of extra damage. And my armor class is now 29. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Are you just, I like, playing so Pathfinder while we play D&D? <laughs> <laughs> Get, getting, getting an early start on the last game. Yeah. It's all good. Um, okay, if that is what you've done, you can. Okay. Um, bonus action, activate the Eldritch Claw tattoo. Since Hakan is shirtless, it is easy to see the uh, design from his shoulder. Begin to shift and move since he hasn't really uh, wrapped him injuries up beforehand uh, I, I've got plenty of movement to get here <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then two attacks uh, first attack uh, I believe that is a murder sandwich yep okay you are indeed the bread um, so that would be 31 to hit for mm -hmm. 17 uh, since I don't have Flurry of Blows this turn, I will spend the key point to see if this does anything. Um, roll, roll it twice. Yeah, I'll roll the dice twice, because it's not the modifier. Uh, is my thing only a d6, or is it a d8 now? It's supposed to be a d8. I haven't updated that. Okay, so roll 2d8 then. And then add 4. Uh, right. uh, 11. Um, I will up, uh, work on updating that there. Uh, does it take necrotic damage? Um, it seems to, but not as effectively as you might expect it to. Okay, and is it affected by the poisoned condition? Uh, no. Okay, good to know. Uh, and then 25 for 8 more. Okay. Um, uh, sorry. Um, though both of those hit, correct? Yes. I've been clicking the wrong thing. Attack plus 11. Does that do anything? Come on. It is supposed to... So how much damage is that supposed to be? So that would be 5. And then we'll just use the other d6. So 5 and 6 on okay. those. Because my thing is on there. So 11 more damage. Okay. Alright. It does seem to be very... It seems to be on the cusp of uh, of falling, but it doesn't have. But it still maintains its balance at least a little bit. Um, the uh, the entity or the the construct uh, losing a lot of its integrity at the legs, um, but still standing. Uh, anything else you want to do on your turn? Uh, that is action, bonus action, and movement. So I am good. Okay. Then, oh, good thing it, I did update this because my hand of healing is also a d6 when it's supposed to be a d8. <laughs> uh, on Mara's turn, she's going to move over here, activate the mace, but kind of, I'm going to have her move around here on her turn to kind of utilize all of her movement to get around here. So she's still within range, but unsure as to whether or not she needs to be within immediate threat. Um, and then it is the Aqualoctos. Um, 
bracing itself, uh, it will attempt to make uh, mighty swings against all around it. Um, it gets one attack per arm, so that would be six. Um, oh boy. And then, okay. so it's going to do two against Renji, two against Ikan, one against Tyrena, and one against uh, Zaiden as an Earth Element. Is there a way for me to get more attacks? <laughs> Be a fighter. Um, <laughs> more, it's a way for me to get more attacks from him. Oh, from him. Yes. Uh, you might need to. You would like to. You would like to use the tank action provoke. Yes. Are you the tank? <laughs> no, but I do have an armor class of twenty nine at the moment. True. You don't know what Tyrena's armor class is right now. To be fair. David Renji, turn your tank stance on. <laughs> um, so she, so the the construct is going to make attack. So the first one against Renji, twenty nine again for ten slashing. Okay, so it it's able to hit. Okay, so it has a a ten percent chance to hit me. Uh -huh. uh, so ten slashing damage. Yep. Uh, on the first will... attack. Yep, and then the second attack against you, natural twenty for sixteen total slashing damage. <laughs> Are you uh, sure you're the tank today? <laughs> I'm below a hundred hit points. Um, next up, it's two attacks against Hikan. Hit me. Uh, oh, wait, no, no, no. I should, I should be higher. Uh, I should be at one thirty-one minus. Uh, so you've taken a total of twenty-six 26. points. One hundred five. Yeah, one hundred five. One hundred five. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So fifteen doesn't hit Hikan. Not even close. 18 doesn't hit Ikan. Nope. Uh, against Tyrena. 28 certainly hits Tyrena, but 18 okay. slashing damage doesn't get through the temporary HP provided by the uh, Iron Knuckle armor. Um, My and, goodness, uh, RT, you roll so well today. <laughs> and natural one against uh, Zaiden's <laughs> Earth Elemental form. Um, and that will be it. It can't move anywhere, um, so it will remain there. Zaiden. Uh, Zaiden. Then we'll engage punch shoot. Okay. Twenty for thirteen bludgeoning. Okay. Uh, with the work that your allies have put in, you push forward and slam a fist into it, uh, upsetting its entire structural integrity, and like a hollow machine, begins to fall apart in a pile of rubble. I want everyone within five feet of it to make a dexterity saving throw for me, please. An easy one. Oh, that's not easy for... That's Elf Elemental. 23. Okay. Uh, so you take... Uh, seven points of non-magical bludgeoning damage. So you probably don't take much at all as an Earth Elemental. Um, no. Rangy? Yep. Dex saving throw? Yes. Apologies. Uh, 17? Uh, that's pass. Okay. So You're looking for a DC 15 on this. Um, yeah. The, uh, 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 is it half or f uh, no damage? Uh, you have evasion, don't you? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Then no. Um, and as it lands as a pile in the water and splashes, something f is flung out of the top of the pile and lands just behind Zaiden. Uh, this viscous... A uh, gooey creature that emerges from the thing. Um, tiny little thing. Um, the water, you also notice with your very high passive perceptions at this point that the water level rises somewhat slightly, as if most of the stuff that was animating this thing was water. Um, but uh, the oozy creature. Uh, that emerges is now behind Zaiden, um, and it's still Zaiden's go. Uh, so, Zaiden will go like so, mm -hmm. and then we'll give it another slam for seventeen for fourteen. That hits as you smack. <laughs> um, it still remains standing, but it is uh, certainly vulnerable in this particular instance. Um, cool. Uh, and is that everything on your turn? Yeah. Max. Did 
You're muted. I was like to zap the thing with my bonus action. Okay. 30 for 12. <laughs> yeah, that'll hit. And with my main action, I'm going to be trying to just dismantle this box. Okay. Um, give me either uh, an attack roll with a spell of your choosing, or uh, that'll do it. Um, <laughs> nice. You, you just kind of gather the gather the lightning energy in your fist. Bam! <laughs> Punch straight through the wood of the crate. Yeah. Um, and, like, you don't break apart the box, but you your hand fits on something that feels very, very complicated uh, and metal, though. Um, but you believe that now you've laid a Now I've made a, a gap, I can rip it apart better. Yeah. Um, yeah, you might need to spend an action on the next turn to actively remove That's it from fine. the box, but, yeah. Um, cool. Uh, Tyrena, uh, will tromp over here and will attempt to swing on the, on the creature. 22 certainly hits for 22 damage and she will smite it. Uh, with a level one smite. An additional eight, so that's 30 total damage against this creature. What level's Tyrena? Uh, 15. I think she's a level below you guys. Okay, I'm going to check something, but go on. No um, but that will be her go. Renji. Um, I think I'll move over here. Mm -hmm. Um, also, I do regain some hit points. I get regain six hit points because this one is down. Yep. Uh, and I will do two attacks on this one. Okay. With the super advantage you're, you know and love or hate. I don't really know how, uh, how you feel about it. Uh, that is a 23 to hit for the first one with sneak attack damage. Mm -hmm. uh, is... Uh, 23. Okay. And then second attack. Uh, that's a natural 20. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, no undead damage, uh, no hexblades curse, so 16 plus okay. 12 is 28. Okay. Nice hit. Um, as you cut into this thing, this it's already quite diminutive, this thing, um, but it's get, gradually getting smaller and smaller as you cut away at it. Um, the uh, a, a large part of it like steaming into the room with being in contact with the uh, uh, with the radiant blade. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else you can or wish to do on your turn? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just add another uh, D8. <laughs> um, I'm I'm now 23 oh, armor no. class oh no <laughs> okay I can't do that is damage it, so, it also uh, a couple of things damage to uh, to this yeah one. right but you rolled a natural 20 oh so uh roll it again three okay and my armor class is 24 I think it would only be one of the d8s <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure on that one. That's something to discuss later. Um, the thing that I wanted to check, Tyrena's supposed to be doing an extra D8 radiant damage on every attack. Oh, okay. Uh, because of improved Divine Smite, which the only reason why I know that is because I played a Paladin recently. That's fine. Uh, um, secondly, yeah. I don't know if he'll allow this, in which case I'll just punch it, but I want to channel my inner Thor and just drink this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, want, you want to drink the bad guy? I want to drink the bad guy. Okay, let's. That's hilarious. Do you have let's... a Do you have a straw? <laughs> uh, I have a mess kit. I have. Yeah. Wait, yeah, in the yeah. stores of Snow Peak, was there a straw? I think that I is in my... someone giving you a straw at some point. I can't remember who it was though, but I think you have a straw in your inventory. I do not have it listed in my inventory. <laughs> you, you say you have a straw. I mean, oh, no, I've got places to put a straw that I just put it in there. So yeah, I was gonna say you have. Goodbye. 
you have a brewer's kit, it's so you probably have something that is tantamount to a straw within within that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, okay. How do we do this? <laughs> it's more of a question for me than anything else. How do we How do, we do this? Well, I would imagine you, you do it start by like some kind of grapple or attack to get the straw into it, and then con okay. to... Probably, probably con. I guess. Um, <laughs> this, is a, this is a wild ride today. Um, Jab it with that straw. Okay, give me give me an unarmed attack. Twenty nine. Twenty nine. Okay. Let's see. So you managed to stab the thing into uh, stab the straw into the actual creature. Um, give me a con save. Okay. Uh, constitution saving throw. Here we go. Eighteen. All right, let's see how well it does with its own con save. Five. Ah. So. It is a liquid as well. That's why I had the idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, for the, sa for the sake of it, for the sake of it, how do you drink this thing? How do you drink this? How do you so, want to drink this? How do you want to quaff this? Uh. It, it con, um exhales on the way over there, so that way, like his diaphragm's just right in the right spot, so he can like inflate his uh, his his body properly for the full uh, sucking motion in regards to using the straw. Stabs this thing like a Capri Sun, which I don't know if that's a U.S. only thing. Now we got okay. and then just. Slurps, and it's just kind of like the big fucking motion of just um god see because because it's like when i said i wanted to channel thor it is the idea of thor drinking enough seawater to cause the tides and so it's just <laughs> okay <laughs> and you're immune to poison i am poison indeed immune to poison <laughs> So I can't really make you roll a constitution save to not gag. Um, you might feel a bit uncomfortable and a bit bloated because this is enough, this as an entity oh, with yeah. enough liquid to stand at least half of your height and you mm -hmm. just downed it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, regardless of what capabilities of a monk you are and have, physics be physics. <laughs> um, but that's, that's fine. You kind of... And like swallow it down. And there's just silence, and then the first thing that kind of apparates in the room as a noise is Tarina going, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, I think that's most of our reactions. Like Zayden, a fellow just tilting his head. What? There's other statues. As it kind of just kind of like collapses from drinking too much. Oh, I will also take advantage of the tremor sense of the Earth Elemental to see if you can feel any more ooze inside any of the statues. Um, you, uh, I'd say with combat over, you go around and assess yeah. things. You you see that there's water within them, but there's not any kind of driving force. It's just there's there seems to be something missing from them. You imagine that chances are this thing was utilizing water filled statues to permit its attacks. Um but uh yeah. I'm gonna uh, keep roping the box open. Yep. You after a brief few moments you tear asunder this wooden box and reveal what appears to be an uh, a metal pole roughly 10 feet tall with the uh, circumference of about half a foot uh, in the middle of it like it at each end it appears like a standard cylinder and then when it gets to the middle it appears like this very complex looking key like structure um, as if it fits into some kind of jigsaw almost Just pick it up and go found it well found the thing yeah good it's quite the thing to heft considering how big it is um, yeah it's... I'm like rolling this thing yeah. 
Okay. And I was I'll mention along the you said about a big vault. Yeah, That's it's in the room. the other room. Well then, let's see if we can open this door. Let's keep wheeling this thing out. It's locked <laughs> still. Tyrina will lean down and help pick it up. Um... <laughs> just to stare at it for a few seconds and just go, thanks. Mm. Not a problem. Um, oh, yeah. Ben. You, you present the medallion again to the door. <laughs> and it... shove the medallion <laughs> against the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I believe this is the... This is the Do room we... with the... Can Zyden go in with... Yeah, you can room? squeeze through one space below. Yeah. Okay. It just halves your movement, and I think it makes you vulnerable to attacks if you're in a squeezed position. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure I can move the token itself. It seems to be trapped in the wall now. Yeah. I don't know. I'll make a bit more space so I can be in here. Yeah, I can I can move away. Yeah. Yeah. I'll step in to give it what's the room. Okay. Okay, again with tremor sense, can I feel anything within the green ooze? Um you how far does your tremor sense go? Fifty feet. Okay. And is any surface? Uh, I'll have to look up how tremors actually work. I imagine it. I imagine it is every every surface because like you sense vibration. It might be. Solid it might be a bit more muffled if it's like water that's connected to the ground. Yeah, can sense detect precisely locate vibrations, including those of other creatures. Creatures of tremors have to be in contact with the source of the vibrations that is via the ground. Thus, it cannot be used to detect flying or incorporeal creatures. Yeah. Hmm. Um, as you as you kind of oh, branch, hmm? aquatic creatures can tremor sense. You also use the location of creatures moving through water. Okay. Yeah. Um, as you extend your tremor sense out in each direction, uh, how far is it again? Sorry. Fifty feet. Fifty feet. Sixty. Sixty. Okay. So oh, that's quite far. Yeah. Yeah, the mic just didn't pick it up very well. That's okay. Um, the uh, you feel not anything on the floor or anything immediately within the goo at the end of the room. You do notice that there's a lot of splotches of green on the ceiling, however. And yeah, Zidon will look up and then point his hand up. <laughs> oh, how many are there? Six. Okay. Put some sphere on the ceiling. Oh dear. <laughs> More boxes. Okay. Uh, it's big enough to fill the entire room. Yeah. Uh, so, as you uh, as you manifest the power of the storm uh, at the ceiling, um, I don't even think they are capable of. They are not capable of passing without anything short of a twenty. Um, so I'll try. Well, They'll take seven bludgeoning damage. Yes, Three, bludgeoning damage. Four. What do I have? There we go. Five, six, seven. No, wait, no. One too many. Um, either way, they all fail. Um, it's like six to me, so. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, either way, they all fail. Um,. And as they do, uh, they are forced to the floor. Um, and since I have a bonus action, yep. I may as well strike one. The one next to me there. The 31 for 20 lightning damage. Okay. As you Actually, strike it with lightning... Need to donate because we've got choo-choo. You realize that these are much like the alchemical chews found in the, in the sewers of Hyrule. And instead of exploding apart as you would expect it to, it wiggles in its place and is now wreathed in lightning. Um, sitting there with its dumb little expression, just 
unable to comprehend what happened or why it's on the floor now, but it still stands. Um, and I will give it a little lightning token uh, to suggest that it has been charged. I just squints at it like he's a little shit. <laughs> <laughs> you little shit, how dare you. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, t -t 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 what we'll do, because this is another combat encounter and we're coming to the end, I will say we will uh, end the session here for now as mm -hmm. you are surrounded by choo-choos. Um, I'm gonna just draw my box cause that's so that I remember it's there. Yeah. There's a different question since we got oh. the jump on them, do we get a surprise round of beating the hell out of them? Maybe. Um but we'll we'll discuss that oh, yeah, when sure, we get to so. it next time. Um you need to make the box smaller so I can actually fucking see it. There we go. There you go. Um but yes, thank you everybody so much for listening slash watching. I have been Articulate T, the, the Game Master for this campaign, The Legend of Zelda Hyrule Chronicles D&D campaign. And with me, as always, I have had Renji Fox being played by Nether. Yay! I have had Ikan Sio being played by Alvarance. That monster was not very energizing. <laughs> <laughs> it was not had, made of Lucas Head. I have had Zayden Shari being played by Robo Pirate. Bye-bye. Yeah, and I have had Max being played by Keystrith. Look, I like my lightning spells, okay? <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye.